Hello, I'm Ben from Meku, and today in this video, we're going to talk about the differences between vacuum forming technology and pressure forming technology. Now, some people think that vacuum forming and pressure forming are the same thing. Now, they are both thermoforming and sit under the thermoforming term, but there's some really key differences that we're going to sort of highlight and talk about today between pressure forming and vacuum forming. Vacuum forming is the process of heating up a sheet material, placing it over a template or object that you want to form, and then sucking air in a vacuum out from underneath it. So pressure forming is the process of heating up a sheet material and laying it over a template or tool that you want to form. The main difference between that and vacuum forming is that we actually flip it on its head and we apply positive pressure from above the sheet material rather than sucking a vacuum from underneath it. So when you're using a vacuum former, you can only pull to one atmosphere of pressure, which is a vacuum. By using positive pressure, we can actually charge the tanks up to much higher forces and get it all the way up to 60 PSI, which equates to about five tons of force, which is about four times more force than a vacuum former. So what that five tons of force actually means is that we can get a much, much, much higher level of detail than you can get with vacuum forming. With five tons of force, you can essentially pick up the same amount of detail that you'd get from injection molding, which is impossible to get with a vacuum formed part. So here we have a vacuum formed part and you can see that the material has sort of struggled to get into all of the detail of this part. There are a lot more rounded edges in these geometries that should be very sharp. And the surface texture here has hardly been picked up at all. And that you can see these quite large radiuses around the edge of each of these parts as well. If you compare that the same model to a pressure formed part, you can see that all of these separate bosses are incredibly sharp and have a lot more definition. It's actually picked up all of this tiny, what would that be, two millimeter high writing, um, and has brought all of that lovely detail to the surface. And you've also got this very, very nice surface texture across the whole thing, which has actually come from that 3D printed part which you just simply couldn't see on the vacuum form. It also means that our tolerances, if we were going to be putting these two parts together in some sort of an assembly, are much, much greater and much, much sharper. So here we have a vacuum formed part. And you can see how the material has tried to be pushed into all of these geometries. But where you see these quite large radii, it's not been able to push in that much because it doesn't have that much force from the vacuum. If you compare that to a pressure formed part made on the multiplier, you can see how all of these radii are actually not radii anymore at all. They're sharp, clean edges. And we've picked up all of the surface texture of the 3D printed part. And you can see those layer lines and picked up all of the detail between the bosses that the vacuum formed part couldn't even get into. So this is our business card example that we use at trade shows. And you can see on this vacuum formed version of this, um, we've picked up very little of the detail from the 3D printed template or, or tool. The QR code hasn't really come out at all. Um, neither of the rulers and the Meku logo and the refraction grating are essentially non-existent. If you compare that to our pressure formed part, you can see that the surface texture across the whole thing is incredibly smooth and accurate. You've got that tiny, what would that be like 0.2 mil writing, which is picked up, which is impossible to even see on the vacuum formed part. 
Your QR code is absolutely clear. All of your debossed and embossed ruler is very, very clear and sharp as well. And most importantly of all, this one micron refraction grating, you can actually see the rainbow in itself. Okay, so what do the two technologies of vacuum forming and pressure forming have in common? Well, the design guidelines and constraints between the two technologies are actually fairly similar. You can use draft angles, air holes, and you can also use either male or female tools. So what about materials? Well, between pressure forming and vacuum forming, you can actually use any type of thermoformable material. The only key difference to really understand is that a pressure former will be able to do much thicker gauges of material because it is much more powerful. Okay, so now we're just going to cover a quick summary of the key differences between vacuum forming and pressure forming. Okay, so first things first is really about level of detail. You're always going to get far superior levels of detail using pressure forming over vac forming because you essentially have four times as much power. And in turn, what that really means is that your part tolerances are going to be much, much, much tighter, much closer to injection mold levels of quality rather than vacuum forming. It also means that with pressure forming, you're going to be able to replicate your surface finish almost identically to whatever it is that you're trying to form, whereas vacuum forming will really struggle with that. And with pressure forming, you're always going to be able to use much thicker gauges of material thicknesses that you would not usually be able to use with vacuum forming. So what is it that these two technologies also have in common? Well, the first thing is affordability. They're both very affordable production processes for small production runs with short lead times and fairly simple to make and accessible tooling. The second thing is speed. They're both quite quick production processes where you can go from idea to final part in your hand pretty rapidly. What in turn that means is that they're both quite flexible production processes as well. You can test and iterate on ideas quickly and cost effectively. So both of these production processes can also employ very tough and durable materials that you might not be able to get from other prototyping or batch production processes like 3D printing, for example. So they're also both very viable production processes for producing food safe packaging and materials. So if you want to make prototypes or small production runs in a food safe way, both vacuum forming and pressure forming are good technologies to do so. So we now really hope that you understand the differences between vacuum forming and pressure forming technologies. Check out the website at meku.me for any more information on the multiplier or the formbox, and we'll see you in the next video.